hello friends welcome to vt chap so in this video i am going to tell you about the delayed branch so delayed branch means so that means it is going to delay the some time for executing the instructions so that means look at the first point here so the branch instruction delays the pipeline operation that means actually uh, you have a previous operation that are already in the pipeline so whenever a branch enters into the instruction phase or enters into the pipeline automatically so whatever the operations until that particular point you have so those operations will be delayed for some time okay and then after that delay this actual branch is going to take the operation that is that means this branch address is going to so that is the actual process of this particular delayed branch so whereas to avoid this so we have a method so this risk processors is going to rely on the compiler so basically this risk processors are mostly rely on the compilers right so that is why so those delayed branches will be rearranged and then the those conflicts or nothing but the delays will be reduced by using the risk processors so this particular method we can call it as a delayed branch okay so in the next slide i am going to explain about the delayed branch and how this uh, uh, risk process is going to rearrange those delays and actual process will be performed by using the another method in the next slide i am going to explain right if you see here so you have uh, two separate blocks that are listed here the two tables are here have, you have here so the first table you are going to uh, use Uh, no operation insertions in the first lap, first table whereas in the second figure you are going to use a uh, risk of processors after rearranging the insertions for reducing the delays in the branch so if you see the first one here carefully so in the first step so you are entering at the load and it is at the first phase so after this you are going to the second one that is increment and it is going to enter at the clock cycle 2 and then at clock cycle 2 this is at a second phase that means load is going to the second phase and the increment is still in the first phase and the third step so this add operation is inserted at the time 3 delay time 3 so at this particular point so it is going to be completed the execution process and then the increment is at load alu operations after the fourth step clock cycle at clock cycle 4 increment is going to be completed its execution part and the third one add part is at uh, alu operation fourth step one branch instruction is inserted right so when this particular branch instruction is entered so it will be at the first phase that means at a fifth clock cycle it is entering into the fetch phase so that means the remaining operations will be at a execution phase and at the alu operation phase the actual process is not at completed suddenly one branch condition enters into the this particular table right so now what happens here we have to complete these instructions right so that is why so we have to insert no operation here at the sixth position so now when you insert a sixth position at no operation so it will be in the first phase and this will be in the second phase and it is going to complete its execution part right now so we have to complete this one also so that is why one more no operation will be inserted and it will be at the first phase and it at this point particular point it is going to complete the execution point so now so this will be in the second phase no operation right and at the eighth point so you can see so it is going into the ninth clock cycle whereas so no operation 1 is going to executed and the no operation 2 that is uh, the seventh one is at uh, second alu part and at this particular point it is at first phase after the next clock cycle it is at uh, this particular point it is going to be completed after the 10th clock cycle the final branch instruction is going to be executed right so 
you have a problem here at the branch to x so instead of uh, completing in, uh, for completing these two operation two no operations are inserted when one branch condition enters here when when, uh, when the point is entered here so you have to complete these two also so that is why so it is going to take no two no operations here and it is increasing the two clock cycles for executing those instructions so that is why so we are calling this as branch in order to avoid this branch delay we have another technique here see the second table here carefully in this particular one it is going to be completed in by using six steps only and whereas it is going to take only eight clock pulses so how this is going to be done so look this carefully the first one first step in this particular uh, table so first step what we are doing we are loading the content so that i am writing it as so small letter l right it is in the first phase that is instruction fetch phase second one is so increment i n c i am writing it short so at this particular point it is going to enter at the clock cycle 2 and the first one is going to be completed at uh, alu so first instruction phase is completed it is going to enter into the alu operation in the third step you are introducing the branch to x operation here so whereas in this table you are performing add and subtract after that you are inserting the branch but after rearranging these instructions so now you are inserting the branch x third clock cycle so this branch will be entered at this point instruction is going to be completed its execution part and the second one is going to be at a second phase that is halu phase in the fourth step add operation will be implemented add will be introduced at uh, clock cycle 4 okay so at clock cycle 4 so when you enter uh, this clock cycle 4 second one it is going to complete its execution part and the third one is going to enter at the alu phase after that in the fifth step you are performing the subtraction operation it is going to enter the clock cycle at a fifth position when you enter this one so this is going to complete the execution phase and the add operation will be at the second one second phase that is ALU phase so after this you are entering into the executing the instruction x so now it is going to enter at the sixth clock cycle it will be enter at this point and now so add operation is going to complete the execution part and then so subtraction operation will be at a ALU operation after this so one more clock cycle is going to take that is for ALU operation whereas this uh, subtraction operation is going to execute it so that is the seventh position so after eighth clock cycle the instruction x is going to be executed that is how the delay in the branch will be reduced after rearranging the instructions here okay so next one so this is a very important topic so mainly for uh, large computers vector uh, processing means simply you can call it as a mathematical calculation so mostly the supercomputers are going to be used this type of vector processing so see the first point here so there is a class of computational problems that are beyond the capabilities of conventional computer so we have some class of uh, problems that are listed in the uh, real day-to-day -day real time life so these type of uh, problems are not suitable for the conventional computers so those conventional computers so they are not able to execute those instructions right so for these type of uh, complex problems we have we are going to require a vast number of computation tasks that will take a conventional computer days or even weeks to complete so normal conventional computers so when you implement these things in the vector processing normal uh, conventional computers are not going to be executed in a one single day so it is going to take a number of days or even weeks to execute that particular calculations so right so in so these vector process, processing is having more computing capacity so these will be used in the 
science and engineering applications the problems can be formulated in terms of vectors and matrices that lend themselves to vector process mainly so engineering applications like science and uh, engineering applications so these vector processes are going to be implemented to do the vector calculations and the matrices the fourth point if you see computers with vector processing capabilities are in demand specialized applications some specialized applications we require this kind of uh, vector processing capability so see the points here what are the mostly used vector processors in the real time applications the first one is long range weather forecasting system weather forecasting system is very much required for our day to day life so why because it is going to analyze the years number of years of data to calculate the weather forecast so what is the weather uh, after two days after one month so this will be calculated by using the previous data so to analyze all this particular data so the normal conventional computers are not at all suitable so that is the reason we are going to implement vector processors for this kind of long range weather forecasting and so petroleum explorations medical diagnosis is a very much complicated task so now you can see so in today's uh, uh, environment so if you see the corona vaccine manufacturing so they are going to analyze the huge data so huge data and huge samples will be taken and it is going to analyze so what will be the results of uh, using this particular vaccine in order to analyze all those things we need a large capacity of uh, computers that are going to analyze all those results so in this also we are going to use vector processors and so aerodynamics and space flight simulations so flight simulations are very much complex to design and very much hard to use so whereas to implement all these things that means all the air traffic will be controlled by using this aerodynamic and space flight simulations so this is a very complex population applications up to now we have right and then the artificial intelligence and expert systems so the day by day this artificial intelligence techniques are increasing are demanding more why because almost in uh, in each and every uh, real time applications we are using this particular ai intelligence so even uh, traffic if you want to monitor the traffic so which persons are not uh, wearing a helmet or uh, the number plates and who are uh, wrongly driving for analyzing all these uh, results we are using the artificial intelligence for calculating all these results we require vector processors and next mapping the human genome to analyze the human genes also so we require a very large vector processors and also in the image processing so image processing is a most important technology why because so almost in each and every crime records so we are going to use this image processing techniques so to find out the different kinds of uh, criminals and what what are the activities of those particular persons and in the normal uh, day to day life also so when that particular person is uh, uh, work, running or walking around the normal uh, stations or in the bus stations we can find that particular persons by using the image processing